Welcome to the Probate Mastermind Podcast. These episodes are recorded live once a week and are hosted by the AllTheLeads.com coaches. Agents, investors, and wholesalers join the coaches for everything from marketing tips, sales psychology, life deal analysis, transaction engineering, advanced real estate strategy, and personal development. You will learn to get more listings, more deals, and find financial freedom by listening to these episodes. Be sure to catch show notes at AllTheLeads.com slash podcast and join our free Facebook mastermind community, All The Leads Mastermind. Welcome industrious agents and investors nationwide. Today is Thursday, December 10th, 2020, and this is Mastermind Podcast number 307. Coming up on the holidays, hope you guys are finishing the year strong. Uh, we have four in the queue right now. We do have room for more, so just hit star six and uh, hit one, and you can get in there and have your questions, your wins. Pretty much nothing's out of bounds on this or off limits on these calls. So let's start with our first caller, phone number ending in 1110. You're up next. Hi, this is Cliff. I'm new to this, and actually I'm new into real estate business. I have my license. But yeah, I saw that my wife had gotten a thing a while back. She's been a realtor for a long time. And I just want to find out how to get involved in this kind of market because I would rather deal with sellers than buyers. Oh, yeah. 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 Cliff, this is a, I will just tell you, it's an extremely good niche for a brand new agent because a vast majority of these people you're going to be reaching out to are not local. You're going to be reaching out to people all over the country that just inherited property in your market. And they don't know you from the guy that's got signs all over the neighborhood or doing print and TV commercials. So you're really on an equal footing. And and sometimes I think you're on a better footing because you're really trained to do probate. A lot of the experienced traditional agents are set in their ways. So you're what you're really doing, you're reaching out to motivated absentee owners and helping them anything they need, including getting their property listed and sold. But if you, unless you have any specific questions, I'll do the same thing. I'll have one of our sales team reach out to you right after the call. So you guys have these leads you develop through searching around through different court records and whatnot. And then what do you do? Yeah. Leads from you? Is that how that works? Yeah, we physically go to the courthouse in every county where we have a subscriber, get the probate data. It's a very time-consuming process. Then we add extremely accurate phone numbers. We've got templated letters. We've got included coaching. So it's really a complete system. And we'll basically give you all the information and teach you to reach out to these people and be able to help them. One of our salespeople can walk you through the whole system start to finish in probably five to ten minutes and as soon as this calls over at two two o'clock i'll have one of them reach out to you all right thank you all right fair enough next up is phone number ending in seven three six eight this is christina i'm here in texas and i don't have a win because i'm new i haven't gotten my first set of leads yet but i do have a couple of questions what is the difference between a pri private money lender and a hard money lender or are they the same so typically it's kind of semantics like they're both private lending unregulated commercial lending from private non-institutional lenders but typically private lending refers to the dentist or the doctor down the street or the, the probate seller who just got a big windfall of cash and oftentimes that's going to come with no origination points and an interest rate of somewhere from you know six to ten percent where hard money is more the the institutional investor groups that are offering private investment loans that's usually going to come with points uh, origination points from one percent to four percent and interest rates anywhere from eight percent to eighteen percent and oftentimes depending that depends on your experience level and the price point of the project but it's either way they're they're basically you know non 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 bank loans that are that are made b to b if you look if you search ask the expert you can look you can find the the interview that Jim referenced in our YouTube channel you can find it on autoleads.com it's part of a series called ask the expert and we did a thing with Rick Roll from GoNav Capital and they're the bridge between the two really they are they're not a traditional hard money lender. They're not as attractive. Their rates and, and terms aren't as attractive as what you can negotiate on your own in your own community of the private loan. But they're somewhere in between. It, it's they're less aggressive terms. Like it's if you're just getting started and you have experience and you're looking to scale quickly, like they're really they're a good resource. Okay. And then a follow up question to that, if I may, is one of the reasons why I'm so attracted to this program is the ability to become an investor, which I've never done, but I've been wanting to since I was in my 20s. Do you guys help me structure those deals or 
Is it just leads only? No, that's a big part of what these calls are about. If you listen to the archives of these, I don't know that there's ever been a week where we didn't end up transaction engineering something. So if you, if you find that, bring us as many facts as you can. This is what the asset value. This is the, re, the ARV or the retail value. This is what the seller says they want. As many details as you can give us on the asset value and the motivation, the reason they're motivated and their level of motivation, then we can start to determine how much equity is there and what strategy can be applied based on their level of motivation and the equity level in the asset. And really, I've found I can fit pretty much any residential, any probate deal, I can fit within one of six strategies. And that's part of what we do in Mastery is show all the potential ways that you can work with these families and monetize these deals. But it really fits within six this six six different strategies. And I was gonna I was gonna also add if you get one on a Friday afternoon you don't have to wait till the following Thursday, just send us an email. Or you can jump on Bruce as our full time coach. He's a very seasoned realtor and investor. You can you're entitled as a subscriber to a free coaching call with him every month and if you need more than that, he's available also. But yeah, no, we'll help you we'll help you we'll help you structure them. What I loved, I've been buying and selling for 40 years. What I loved about the uh, NAV cap, I, I tested it and I went and put a deal I was working on in there. And I answered five questions. And in five minutes, I had an approval at 8%, which is pretty good for a hard money loan. And most of them out there are 12 to 15%. So their interest rates are pretty reasonable for an easy loan like that. And the fact that you can get an answer real quick online is very appealing. Before you you want to go into the, making that offer and dealing with the person, knowing that you have the funding and kind of having an idea what it is. Okay. I'm really excited. I appreciate all your help. And I am starting to assemble my team. I got a web address from GoDaddy last night. So I'm like just trying to get my – and there's so much to listen to. So I just want sure. to tell you all thank you so much. But th- those are all my questions today. Thank you. Yeah, you're very welcome. And I was just going to add, you don't have to, we've got seven, 800 hours worth of content. If you have a particular question, our website is extremely robust. You can just go to that search bar, put in almost any subject, and you'll find where we talked about it or covered it, or you'll find where you can find it on one of these calls. It's like Google. You may have to play around with it a little bit. You can get almost any question answered there. Though, that, that I don't think too. I don't think there's too much over the last seven years that hasn't come up at least once. So appreciate okay. your input. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. We have a next up is phone number ending in zero three zero nine. You're up next. Hey guys, Christian here. I uh, just want to say hi to Chad again. And I host. I asked you a question yesterday, and I was on the call. But uh, this is a follow-up to my question yesterday, and I couldn't really talk yesterday because I was at the store, and I apologize for that. But remember when I asked you, what do you do when you hang up when probate, a PR person, hangs up the phone? What do you do after that? And I know you mentioned that you pretty much call back and you just say you got disconnected. And how do you follow up with after you just stay silent? And then the other question I had that goes along with it, how often do you follow up? after they do that to you? Do you continue to call them five, seven times, or you just let it go and don't bother them again? So it, it all depends on the context. If you got engagement and then you said something that offended them and they hung up, I, I usually I read the people and read the situation. So if they seem distracted or like they're having a bad day, then I'll call back the next day. But if they seem like they've gotten so much pressure, they're just seeing red and I, and I like they're not I, I don't think I'm going to be able to engage with them tomorrow then I might follow up with them in a couple of weeks at a different time of day for example if, if they're super pissed at nine in the morning they just got to work and if they're late for a meeting and they answered their phone anyway I wouldn't call back at nine I would call back at 1230 and see if I could speak to a different version of that person on their lunch break so I would take into account the time of day and what's happening around them what actually what was said in the conversation and their level of, of aggressiveness in, in determining how soon and how often I would try them again. Does that answer your question? Yeah, and then when you call back again, let's say a few weeks from now, do you still do the USP again or are you just make like, hey, Christian here, just following up, just wanted to see how everything's coming along or how would you handle it? Again, I, I think you- I would think back, take a good note of what happened in the conversation. For me, like when you talk to thousands of people, I, I leave myself clues, right? <laughs> like angry, short, 
traffic noise in the background. And when you reconnect with them, it's not, you don't have to start over with the probate USP. You can say, hey, Christian, this is Chad. We talked a couple of weeks ago, and I think I caught you at a bad time. It sounded like you're in a hurry and out in traffic. So is, is this a good time to talk for just a couple minutes? And just be ready, because you're going to hear it. Who is this? Christian, we, we spoke a couple of weeks ago. It, it's okay. I'll remind you. We've got a team of folks here locally that help families going through probate. And as part of that, we try to reach out early and often to the families because we realize at any time surprises come up. So I was just touching base to make sure everything's going okay for you guys. And if not, to see if somebody from our team could help you with whatever you might need help with. Is there anything that's off track or you're not 100% clear about? And just re-enter it that way. Okay. That makes sense. Okay, cool. Perfect. Yeah, that's the only question I have today. I appreciate your time. All right. Thank you, sir. Next up is phone number ending in 0055. You're up next. Hey, how are you, Chad? Hey, can you hear me? I'm doing great. Great mastery session. Enjoyed it. So I got a question for you. So where are we at with what I noticed is we didn't see any like examples of the what what a website would look like and where do I find that or how do I get my mind around starting to work on that? Sure. And I actually, we, we had so many people and so many questions. I normally show that as part of mastery. If you go to modern.yourprobatewebsite.com, that'll give you an example. That's just one of many. You can call in and ask to talk to our web team and they can show active sites. This is just a, one of one of the examples. This is a basic before any customization is done. But we, they can share with you some of the sites they're most proud of and the ones they like showing off and some of the other templates or Base sites, but it's modern. It, it's a WordPress application, so we can make it look and feel any way you want. Um, you can customize, add testimonial pages, video pages. You, you can literally do anything you want because it is WordPress. You let us know what your needs are, and we can also connect it. If you have a core website, we can connect those so there's a clean interface between the two, and the customer doesn't even really notice that they're bouncing between two websites. Oh, I see. Okay, sure. And the uh, your. You're you're not ready with any content or guidance on how to market online with the YouTube videos and the Facebook posts and the Facebook videos and things like that. Because as as I'm talking to other investors, that's what's seeming to be working right now. Matter of fact, I was shocked. I was looking at my phone. I'm like, oh, I know that guy. And on my own phone, I, you know, a guy who buys repositions, multifamilies is raising, I guess, doing raising capital for another fund to go buy things. And this is a local guy. I'm like, wow. Presented himself. He's one of, just like one of these uh, national guys. When you're looking on your phone, you're watching a YouTube video and a commercial comes up. I was pretty impressed. And now I see what they're saying. This is, this is it's, if you advertise it correctly, you get your market correctly, this is going to pop up. And I'd love to be able to get that in those executors and executrixes and the probate attorney spaces as quickly as possible because I think it's just it, it's going to separate nobody's doing that sure and I don't have a digital marketing course for this niche right now that's going to be one of the modules that are built into the, the new marketing part of, of probate mastery version 2.0 like the, the master class so over the next few months, I will actually take the time and show you step by step. For now, and Kat can link to these in the, in the show notes, there's a couple of recent mastermind calls where we've talked about it in long form. But you, you essentially take your probate list, export that from my probate leads, import it into Facebook as a custom audience, and you match on first name, last name, all five phone numbers, if you have that many, and the email address. And what you'll find is you'll get, you won't see this, but we know from working directly with Facebook, we have about a 90% match rate on those audiences. If you have a thousand probate leads loaded in, we're going to be in front of 900 of them on a daily basis. And what that's going to hyper focus your budget. So your actual cost Per result, your CPR is really low because it's a small, highly targeted list. And what we find is we get daily impressions like ranging from 25 times a day, they actually see your brand. So you, you never know what's going to work. Video works really well. So what I usually suggest is you pick a quiet morning and go stand in front of your local courthouse something that has it's an emotional image like so that's going to interrupt them by triggering their reticular activation system and then you go oh my god that's my courthouse i was just there last week and then you've got captions playing and it's just a short no more than 30 second video saying are you going through probate in, in new jersey 
Did you know that there's a social enterprise right here in the community to help families through this? Click Learn More. And when they click, they land on a landing page on your on the website we were just talking about, your WordPress site. And there you have – you could do it as an about page. You could do it on the home page but there you have, or a landing page. But there you have a video of you talking directly to the family as you would if someone had just walked up and said, hey, I, I want to introduce you to, to John Doe. He's an executor in the state, and I know you can help him. That's the kind of, like, you don't script it. You don't, like, just talk into the camera the way you would talk to a, a human. And that's really effective, and you need a call to action. So you could have them download something, and as part of that download, that your the opt-in would include the ability to, to SMS market to them, to drop ringless voicemail, to email market. So you can use social media to get, let's say we get a 1,000 of them and we have 4% conversion, like you tighten that audience down. Then you can start to drip, an email drip to them. You can you can text message market. You can drop ringless voicemail. And you can do this for pennies. Now, the one thing I would say is you're just getting started. And this is, it's interesting because it's something new and innovative. I, I still want to see you get your letters out and get on the phones first. This is supplemental. This isn't your primary marketing method because we know direct mail works. We know phone calls work. Digital marketing takes some time. Like if you never end, even if it's working today, it doesn't mean it's going to be working tomorrow. So use the tried and true methods first. And then once you've got that in place, then step in and start doing the digital stuff. And one thing I'll suggest, if you have somebody there in your market that, it, that sounds like you think he's doing a good job, reach out to him and ask him what agency he's using. And maybe you can, maybe he'll give you a referral and you can actually have that agency do all the work that I just confused you with. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. And uh, I'll, I'll look at that. Yeah. So I got just two other, the gentleman, Purnell is his name, your, your, your good student, Purnella. Did you mention, was that his name, David Pernella or Pernella? No, Can you hear me? David. You had mentioned yesterday, sorry, sorry. You had mentioned yesterday about he did a really, I think I, I heard this right, great custom postcard specifically for surviving spouse members. Do you, is there a copy of that or should we reach out to him individually? I'd love to see what that that looks like because I, I, I know that's a little bit more of a, a trickier type so of. So if you go to the Facebook group, All the Leads Mastermind, in the search bar, type in P A N E L L, and you'll see his activity. One of those things will be a video that he made uh, leafing through about a 20 page premium booklet that he made, and that's what I was referencing. Oh, okay. Great. Uh, we've got Thank nine you, more in the queue. Hopefully that helps. We've got a full queue. We'll try to get to all of you today. Next up is phone number ending in 0068. You're up next. Good morning. This is Joe in Sacramento. Hey, Joe. I'm a seasoned probate person, but I only found you guys about uh, four or five months ago, and I thought it was very astute the way you go about giving people much more service than just saying you're a real estate agent. And I've beaten out my big competition several times in the last few months because of what you taught me. So I wanted to thank you. That's, That's like great to hear. hear. Yep. Appreciate the... So you've done several deals where you had competition and you won out because you went above and beyond with just wanting to list the house, correct? Correct. My competition, who I know very well because we've been competing for 15 years, he always goes in from the standpoint of his sale, and I went in from a service standpoint of what could we do to the house to bring uh, more equity to the estate. And people just, they, they see the difference, and it just works really well, so thank you. That's great to hear. We appreciate it. And uh, actually, David Pinnell is in the queue. Chad, you want me to go to him next? He must have uh, a comment. I'm, oh, do you have another question? Go ahead, sir. Yeah. I have a client who's selling properties that will net him almost a million dollars. What would you suggest he do with his, with the money? Do you have capital needs? Like, are you buying and selling or flipping? Yes. So turn them into a private lender is one of the best things you can do because that serves your business. And at, at those rates, even if you're charging him 8%, his money is going to double every seven years. Okay. The other things you can do, you can you can help him diversify by setting up a long-term long-term care plan for himself, an estate plan for himself and his family. 
529 college savings plans. We try to make sure everybody has an opportunity to meet with our registered investment advisor and with our estate planning attorney because probate, he's, he's about to learn. It's going to cost 5 to 8% of the gross value of the estate when he settles out the administration costs. So helping him avoid that in future generations and actually take that million dollars and turn it into multiples of millions. Statistically, without leadership, 75% of families will completely deplete their inheritance within 18 months. And I don't mean investing, spending. So we try to, at, at the point where we have a, an emotional high connection, like where they really think we're the smartest people in the world, we try to use that influence to get them to do the right thing and invest in their family and the generational wealth and the preserving generational wealth. So the good news is he's not going to have a tax liability on that because of the step up basis rule. So this is a, a, for most people, a once in a lifetime opportunity to invest somebody else's money tax, you know, without paying the tax on it. So you could look, ask him what his needs are, ask him how long do you want to work? What do you have in, in mind for your family? And potentially carve off a couple hundred thousand dollars for private money loans to you or your investors. Take a couple hundred thousand and pay for everybody at the next generation's college. Really just focus on what his needs are and what his dreams are and make suggestions. And just know that if you don't, he'll probably spend it. Do you have a registered investment advisor that knows about this? Yeah, that's why I choose to work with RIAs because they're they're educated to a much higher standard and held to a much stricter code of ethics. So they have a fiduciary responsibility to every client, regardless of the investment vehicle. And there's a website. If you go to brokercheck.fendra.org, you can actually search by zip code. You can search at the firm level or the individual licensee level. But that's a good place to start and you see who the RIAs are in your market. But they're typically smaller boutique indie firms, and they don't mind working with, they certainly want to work with somebody who has a million dollars, but they also don't mind working with someone who right now only has $10,000. It's a lot different than the the big financial institution experience. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Chad, All right. let, me, let me chime in. Let me throw in real quick before you move on, Jim. There are a lot of people that inherit money that they're not going to, they might be looking for something that's a, a little bit bigger. They might want to invest themselves. And of course, we all know that a lot of times that person that's never been an investor before has no real estate background, they're going to get themselves in trouble. So if it's somebody that doesn't want to just give you a private money loan, but they want to be involved, one of the things that I've done with a lot of them in my market is turn them into uh, investors in a, in a private investment club that I manage. And if you have a really good business attorney that sets it up properly, you can turn this money into investors that, that you make all the decisions on the real estate flips or buy and hold investments, whatever strategy you're using for your investment. And uh, it's just another option if somebody's not willing to just turn their money over to you at maybe an 8% return. If they want to be a principal in the transaction with you as the manager that gets to pull all the triggers and run the, the flip or run the buy and hold investment, it's something that you can Awesome. Good suggestion. We referenced David Pinnell. David, we have 10 more people in the queue, and I know we could talk to you probably yeah. for hour, hours, but uh, we always want to hear your words of wisdom. Thanks for chiming in. Chad, have the best words of window, wisdom. I just want to answer that, that guy's question. I don't know who just answered, so I'll just chime in on that. It's but just You guys offer so much resources, and all I did, I needed something. I've always brought things to an appointment, so I just wanted something that looked really professional. So I just made a... a I made a PDF book that I could send people by the mail or by email, and it's just a, it's a, it's a 28 page resume basically of everything I've done in probate sales. You could start with a regular resume of what you've done, and I could I'll share my resume on the group, but it's just basically a, a resume templated so that they know that I know what I'm talking about. So it's the USP basically in a big 28 page book that just helps me convert the deals either to a sure. listing appointment or to a wholesale. It's not a postcard. Letters and postcards work, but it's bringing something to the presentation of why you should be there, more value. And David, you said you're fulfilling those at three bucks, is that right, when you mail it? Yeah. So three or four dollars, and not to every single lead, but to the ones you have a, a good dialogue with, so like ones that are, yeah. that are serious. And it's it's really targeted to the ones I just by calling them over the years. Now that I they fall into three categories, and it's the spouses, it's the 
it's the family, the relatives, or it's the out-of-town administrator. And once you identify what category they fall in, and then they have a house to sell based on your probate plus, and once you have a conversation that they're going to sell a house in six months, then they're getting that book from me probably twice over that six months. And I'm going to get an email from them and just dial in their information because then I can retarget them and offer them the same book on Facebook. So they're constantly seeing that. And I don't expect them to ever open it or read it. I really don't. That's great. Great tips, David. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Appreciate it. Next up is phone number ending in 6035. You're up next. Hello. I just have one question and then, like, advice for another one. Sure. So my question is, when the cases come up that they're closed, does that mean that there's no opportunity for us to go and help them? No. A certain number of families, up upwards of maybe 10 to 20 percent, actually not make a decision on whether or not to sell the real estate. So they'll do a like an interfamily transfer, and mm-hmm. it'll show that the house went from John Doe, the decedent, to into a trust or to a single family member. So a, a number of people, and this is especially prevalent in Colorado, uh, a number of people will actually close the probate and just transfer the real estate out to one of the heirs, and then they'll eventually they will end up selling that. So there's opportunity beyond the, the probate closing and end real estate. It's just not there's you're far more likely that real estate will be sold during probate. But not everybody gets around to it. The attorney's ready to go ahead and close the case. He's listen, you're gonna get this anyways. Let's just transfer it out and close this up and you can decide later when you wanna sell it or what you wanna do with it. Oh, okay. Let's see. And then the kind of advice that I have do you guys necessarily go after the cases where the administrator lived with the deceased or if there's like heirs still living at that same house? Yeah, and oftentimes it's a surviving spouse. You can see the decedent name will match the, the personal represent the last name will match the personal representative and they both have the same address. A lot mm-hmm. of times that's a surviving spouse and that's one of the things David just referenced. So it's more sensitive, but understand a lot of times the average senior citizen in the United States, according to the Federal Reserve, only has $24,000 in liquidity. That's their life savings, 24000 bucks. So they're oftentimes on fixed income. The, the house they're living in represents 50 to 80% of their net worth. And now, all of a sudden, instead of getting two Social Security checks, they're getting one. And they didn't have a proper retirement plan. They, they didn't have a proper estate plan. So the urgency, even though they may, a month after the passing, they may say, I'll never leave this house. And, and what we know from the nursing home industry is that's the only plan for uh, 78.8% of senior citizens surveyed by the nursing home industry say that they only have one plan. I'm going to live out my life in my house. But only 20%, according to the CDC, actually get that plan works. The other 80% end up thrown into a stressful situation because the lack of planning created a lot of stress and urgency in the family. So it's, oh, my God, mom can't pay her bills. Her power's been turned off. She can't take care of the house. She can't afford to pay the, the pool boy or the lawn guy. We got it, and then the family has to step in. So you want to make contact with those people, even if their mindset right now is, I'll never sell this house, I'll die here. Okay, fair enough. I'm not trying to force you to sell the home. I wanted to let you know that there's a team here in the community that can help families in these transitionary periods. So whether that means connecting you with social services or transportation or different living situations, just know if there's ever anything you need, please call us. We have really, in in the situation you're in, we have never met the family that we couldn't help. So is it okay with you if I just touch base every couple of months? Okay, perfect. And whatever that frequency is, but letting them just softly introducing your the concept of what you do and having them be aware of that when you call back as that urgency builds and as the finances start to slip or the maintenance gets out of hand, you never know the next month, the second month, or the third month how motivated they're going to be. And it happens all the time. Most, A lot of your come list me calls will be from these surviving spouses. And they file probate, they get into the middle of that, and then all of a sudden they realize, oh, crap, I'm going to run out of money. And then they panic and oftentimes dump equity. And if you look at it as, I look at it as an obligation to those folks because they're, they might not be financially savvy enough to realize they're not forecasting that they don't have enough money. And eventually they're going to run out or eventually the, the, the cost of maintaining that property is going to eat up the savings that they have and they don't have a regular income. So I feel an obligation to touch base and check in on them 
And that if you can do that, you start to build trust with them. And then when they find themselves in that urgent situation, you're the only person in the universe. Like, they just allow you to come in and help them. Okay, cool. That was all. And we do a series called Tips from the Trainer, a video blog series. If you go to allthelead.com in the top mm-hmm. search bar, put in surviving spouse. And there's a tips from the trainer video where we can share some stories and techniques and different things in addition to what we just talked about. You might want to check that out. Okay, so Chad, here's another thing with the surviving spouses, especially those that are elderly. We often, and a lot of folks, make the mistake that surviving spouse is the only decision maker when I think we're really kidding ourselves with that. It's normally the kids that have tremendous influence over what their elderly parent does. And so just going off of the immediate wishes of the surviving spouse and saying, hey, I'm not going to follow up with them is a big mistake because the kids are going to get in there and start putting some pressure and some influence on their parent to say, look, why don't you come move with me? Why don't you go to this assisted living place? They're going to put a lot of pressure in most of the time. And I don't know the statistic like Chad does, but most of the time those houses will be sold just because of the children of the survivor. All right. Excellent, guys. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close the queue because we've got still got six or seven more people. Chad, you had another comment for that person? No, I just said that's really good advice. Yep, good advice. Thank you, Bruce. All right, next up is phone number ending in 5922. You're up next. Hey, guys. How's it going? Great. How are you? <laughs> uh, my name is April. I'm great, sir. My name is April. I'm not a real estate agent. I'm a virtual assistant. And I work with Kim Barber. I really wanted to go in with a queue last week. You guys got a lot of questions about virtual assistance, but I couldn't. So I just wanted to, you know, to answer some of the questions there. I believe the one guy did and did have a question about what, is it going to be just probate or is it going to be admin? Virtual assistants do everything from admin to answering the phone calls to setting up appointments and all that. Just wanted you guys to let you know about it. And I work with my app desk. Oh, great. Yeah, we recommend you guys all the time. You're you're one of the better ones, so thanks for the input. Any feedback, Chad, or any questions for April? No, thanks for being here. You got to hear us recommend you. Next up is Mr. Forsythe. You're up next, sir. Hey, Jim. How are you all today? Doing good, Jimbo. What's up? Oh, I'm just going to give you a good story. I've been working with the attorneys here, and we closed two yesterday of his own property. He's got one other for us to sell, and then the list is going to list. Five more probate if we don't sell them straight to one of our investors. And That's so, from one client? One attorney. It's uh, three. It's the attorney and then three other probate leads. So it's uh, actually four different people we're working with and helping. So, But it was one source. Just, the attorney did his own property and then referred correct. you three more. Wow. That's, That's great. And you, Jim, you just start, made up your mind maybe a month or two ago, I think, to start – working the attorney end of it and focusing equally on that. It's not something you've always Correct. done, or is it? Yeah. It's not. And we've had meetings with two others, and we've got another one scheduled. We had it scheduled for yesterday, and he couldn't make it, so we're rescheduling it for next week. And uh, then Good. we've got other attorneys. We're just doing, trying to do one a week. and then well, hopefully. Good for you. So you are, you're just you're looking down your leads. You're seeing who the players are, and then how are you setting the appointment? Are you just showing up at their office? You calling ahead? How are you getting to meet with them? Calling ahead. The ones okay. we've dealt with so far are people that I've met in the past. The ones we we're, we're going to we're going to meet yesterday was the associate of one that I met with last week, and it's his. Uh, they're not partners, but they're in the same office, and they also do probate. And so meeting with either two or three of those attorneys. So we'll actually hit two or three other sources. And then I've got another a lady that I've, I met about a year or so ago. And I'm going to meet with her in a couple of weeks, at, probably after the first of the year. And yep. uh, just keep hitting. And we go, we go down through and look at the attorneys that have the most probate leads each month. And so we can check sure. out the ones that have the most number, the greater number of leads, and those are the ones that we're concentrated on right now. That's great. Good for you, Jim. Go ahead, Chad. We talk about this a lot. Other people get to hear us talk about it. But if you don't mind, share with everybody, what was your opening statement? Like, what value did you demonstrate to get the appointment? Well, the first attorney was just you know someone I've known. I just hadn't really dealt into him. And we just found out that he went out to lunch with us. And while we're sitting there having lunch, he says, oh, by the way, I've got three personal properties that I need to sell right now. 
and he gave us that information. And then while we were sitting there at lunch, then we talked with him about anybody else that he might, any of his probate clients that we might be able to help. And as it turns out, there's going to be like three of his clients. And one client, one of the properties, we're not sure if we're going to be able to sell. It has a reverse mortgage on it, and it may be too much work to do to make it anything work. Meeting with one of my investors in about an hour to show it to him. If I can't figure out a way to sell it to him, I may call a Chad or Bruce back and see if they've got any ideas. But to reverse mortgage, 143 is what they owe on it, and there's about $80,000 of repairs that could be done, and the property is only worth about 250 You do the numbers real yeah, quick. Yeah, that could be a potential short sale, so reach out to, to Pam if that's the case. She's done a, quite a few reverse mortgages as short sales. Oh, yeah, I know that. I hadn't even thought about yeah. it. Can you do a, will they do a short sale on a reverse mortgage? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we've done, thing she's that, done 50 of them, I'll bet. Okay. The other the other thing to consider, Jim, is as long as you have a savvy investor that's aware of the timeline, because it, it is uh-huh. a ticking clock, but you can actually take those subject to and just leave the Heckam loan in place as you flip the house or transition it to a rental. So they can buy the house subject to, just know that there's a foreclosure clock ticking, so they have to finish the project. So they need to get it rehabbed, get a tenant in there, and then get it do a cash-out refi with a fresh note against it. But as long as you have a savvy investor who understands that timeline and understands the uh-huh. risk, you can actually take these and basically grab a free rental property until you get it rehabbed and get a tenant in it, and then do a cash-out refi and have a long-term buy and hold. Okay. So that's just the way for everybody to make sure that your buyer gets the deal and that you get paid faster. Uh, a short sale will work as well. Okay. I appreciate it. Great job, Jim. We appreciate it, man. Keep it up. And I think people we people often ask us, should I work the, the heirs or the attorneys? And we always say yes. They're, the heirs are typically the now business, but the but an heir is probably – or a personal representative is probably only going to have the experience once in their life. A good probate attorney can turn into a career worth of deals for you. So great job realizing that and taking advantage of it, man. Thanks for the uh, – so okay. far, I think you're definitely in the running for win of the week. Thank you, sir. Hey, Jim you and too. Jim, to chime in on that really fast. What I get this question all the time from our subscribers that they'll set an appointment up with an attorney, and then they call me and say, I don't know what to say. How am I going to prove that I'm, that I'm an expert? And if you're not an expert yet, it doesn't mean that you don't have tremendous value when you go on those attorney appointments. When you have conversations, you just sit down and you tell them, look, I'm taking this meeting with you, and I don't want this to be a one-way street where I'm begging you for referrals, and I'm not offering value. Of course, I want referrals. I want business from you and you to connect me with clients that have a need. But ultimately, what I want to know is what do I need to do to make your life easy? And instead of going in and assuming that every Everything that they need and exactly how to make their life easy, you just ask. And they'll tell you. Most of the time, that answer is just take really good care of my clients and I'll be happy. But by walking in and making the statement, you want it to be a two way street where you provide as much or more value to them than you get, it really sets you apart. You don't even have to be the expert yet. You can work on that later. So if you're holding off on calling attorneys, I'd say don't hold off anymore. Just set meetings up have conversations, tell them that you want to provide value. You don't want it to be a one-way street from them to you and say, what What can I do to make your life and your client's life easier? Another Buy them lunch and doing, get five listings, right, Jim? Exactly. Go ahead, sir. Another thing that we're doing, we're having each of the attorneys that we've met with so far are doing videos for us. And, of course, then we're going to take and post them on my ATL website. We're going to post them on all of our partners' websites. And, of course, we're telling the attorneys, you know, we're going to be, they can't advertise for themselves, we can advertise for them. And so we're going to be putting their videos in our email drip campaigns that we're sending to our probate leads. And, of course, some of those are not going to have a probate attorney. And so they may see an attorney on one of our emails, and they may wind up calling them. So we're offering that as a, a something that we can do for them. And so far, all three of the attorneys that we've talked to, Absolutely. We'd be glad to do a video for you. And uh, That's great. Good job, sir. Keep coming back. We appreciate all the input. We got three more in the web in the queue. We may get to everyone. Next up is 8213. You're up next. 
Hey, guys, it's Fed. How are you? Hey, great, Fed. All right. So the question actually has to do, since we, I noticed many people have been talking about flipping. So I have a client who is a flipper, and he actually asked me, hey, since you're in the probate world, why don't you see if we can get into one of those so that there's not as much competition? Now, this flipper actually does not have much if any experience flipping so he's asking me like hey what do we need to look out for and all this stuff and i'm not sure i'm going about it the right way so what i've been doing even when i search for properties is let's say the property is let's say a thousand square feet then i go look at what something double the size would be and how much it would sell for but i know that with zone you can't always double square footage what do you guys have some suggestions on that because i feel like maybe i'm doing i'm overdoing i think you need to to connect him with a mentor and okay. if you want him to be to be a serious buyer and a sustainable buyer then okay. he needs to learn he needs to learn a lot of people try flipping houses very few people yeah. stay in a sustainable businesses in it and he needs to understand the different acquisition models like it, it, it's just it's too much for you to do his job is to tell you what his strategy is and how he values assets your job is to go find them for him your job yeah. is not to teach him a strategy and and go find them so i would suggest that he go to a local ria Suggest that he find okay. a mentor. Now, the one thing you can do to help start create some momentum for him is go into your MLS, pull 24 okay. months of data, and sort and search for LLC in the seller name field. And okay. you're going to find a bunch of there'll be rental properties and there'll be flips, but just select the ones that look like they're they're flipped, and then export okay. that like a MLS detail sheet for each of them. And then if you can find the, the previous listing, so here, like here's what he paid for it and the photos of it. Here's what he sold it for and the photos of it. And you can maybe mm -hmm. make him like a portfolio out of your MLS records of what everybody else has done in your marketplace in the last 24 months. And that should okay. get him juiced to go, oh, my gosh, I could take a house that looks like this and make it like that and make this much money. But there's a yeah. lot to learn. There, there's a lot to learn, and I, I think it's outside of – it's unreasonable for you to teach him everything. Yeah, because I feel like he all he it. came at me with is he said, look, I'm all cash. Uh, let's say I buy – I'm just going to throw numbers out there. But he said, let's say I buy something for a million. I'll gladly put 500 grand into it, but then I want to make – I want to net 500 grand. But – Sometimes what you're buying is let's you're going to have to add square footage, at least in the areas that he wants to be in. So then he says, well, find out how much I'm going to be able to get. And realistically, not being an architect, contractor or whatever, I can get a rough idea, but I feel like I'm running comps like crazy and without even being 100% sure because I'm, I'm not sure just how much the zoning is going to allow me to add. Sometimes it's 40%, sometimes it's more. What town are you in? Los Angeles. You have ginormous real estate investors association and everybody's yeah. selling something. Like he yeah. should be able to connect with a mentor. I, what I would suggest is, is it sounds like he, he's his, he's probably his biggest investment threat with mm -hmm. that kind of money and, and no knowledge. He's likely to go buy. Yeah. What I would suggest yeah. to him if he were my client, I would say, listen, man, why don't I find you a seasoned investor that's doing flips, will make you the lender, and you can JV on the deal. So instead of taking an interest rate, you actually you take a, a percentage of net profit. And I think I can get you 25% of net profit, but no promises. I'll start the conversation. We'll meet. We'll have a drink. We'll talk about it. But if, if you have a buyer in your list that is a, a seasoned flipper, some of half of them are going to look at it as, well, hell no, I'm not going to train my, train my competition. But if you have yeah. a, a fix and flip investor who has an abundance mindset, that needs capital rather than paying for hard money loans and going through all that headache they can just form a series llc buy an asset together he brings the capital he gets to shadow them and, and watch the projects come together and learn from that investor and then okay. maybe he'll cut his teeth enough that he, he actually will know what to look for so that's okay. the kind of service that I, I think you can provide i wouldn't don't become his mentor unless you're charging yeah for that okay. because he'll wear he's going to wear you out Oh, he's been wearing me out. I feel it. Definitely. Thank you for that advice because that really does help.
Yeah, so just be patient. Like, the best deals are still to come, especially in L.A. Like, why don't you become a lender on a couple of deals? And you can, that gives you, you're a principal in the transaction. You have access to the house. You can go on material runs. You can you can look at the contractor quotes. You can see the P&L, like the way we book this in the QuickBooks, because there are a lot of moving parts to flipping a house. And the other thing that he's probably not aware of is how little of that money you get to keep compared to other strategies. You get blistered on taxes. So the other question, if he were my client, that I would ask is why do you want to flip houses? And if San Diego... Yeah. Anyways, the other question I would ask him is is why are why have you chosen the fix and flip strategy? And if it's because he thinks Chip and Joanna Gaines are just the coolest damn people ever, I would challenge <laughs> him on what are your investment goals? What are your what return do you demand? Because he's going to make more money over time as a buy and hold investor. And in a shifting environment, he has way less risk in, in doing that. So you may be able to change his mind, turn him into a buy and hold investor, and then you just look at cap rates and gross rent multipliers and the rehab becomes much easier and you can get him you can use that million dollars as leverage paired with community bank financing and he can buy a ten million dollar or he can buy a five million dollar portfolio with the money he has right now. But ultimately he'll make and keep a hell of a lot more money. So that's my advice is, is ask him why, if he has sound reasons to be a fix and flip investor, then get him over to a mentor. Perfect. And we're going a little bit over time today, guys. Giovanni, you may be up, probably going to be our last call of the day. What can we do for you? Hi, guys. This is Giovanni in San Diego, fairly new to the probate scene. But I have a question, uh, and it's related to a couple of masterminds ago. Chad had mentioned, or one of you gentlemen mentioned about when a, a case has a PR as an attorney, most likely 80% of those are assign an attorney because no one has stepped up. So when making those calls to those attorney offices, and I also watched the the John Fraker video, he had mentioned that, of course, that the client attorney privacy. Do you have a recommendation of how to approach the gatekeeper and uh, basically get in so that uh, the goal is to set an appointment or to uh, be able to get some information so that uh, they can have a plan of attack on how to work that potential lead. Don't go after it at the lead level. Go after it at the referral relationship level. So you're not trying to get one deal. This is a public administrator or a fiduciary. You're trying to get all of their deals for the rest of their career. So don't call and say, I'm calling about the estate of John Doe in the house at 123 Walnut Street because that's what everybody else does. You call and say something like, my name's Giovanni, I have a team of people right here in Roanoke that help families going through probate, and I keep seeing your, you guys pop up, and I think that what we do is perfectly complimentary. Like, I, I have ideas of how I can help attorney John Doe scale his business, and I can actually market for you where non-solicitation laws prevent you from doing that. Do you think he could have five minutes to talk? And let that organic, that organic conversation about you supporting his small business, let, let, let him ask, well, what is it that you do exactly? Then you talk about your full-blown service, and then he'll connect the dots. And it's okay once you're in rapport and you have good dialogue. It's, geez, of all the cases you're working right now, there's got to be something that you can dish off to me so I can help these families and you can handle more caseload. What would that be? Like, what can I help? Most of your, what do you think I can help most of your, your clients with? And then just Got be quiet. It, yeah. And that yeah. will go to, oh, what redundancy do I have that I don't get paid on that this guy can get paid on? Oh, but the Jones estate, I'll give him the Jones estate. So focus on the relationship, not the deal. Got it. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you, guys. Another great call. I want to challenge each of you, as I always do. I want to thank you for being here. We had some great ideas. I have a feeling all of you should be picking up the phone and calling your attorneys. But take one thing that inspired you on this call, go out and put it into practice, and come back next Thursday and share the results with the group. Be safe, be productive, and we will talk to you all same time next Thursday. Take care, everyone. 